Psalm 51. Psalm 51. Purge me with this up, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Let me hear joy and gladness. Let the bones of the Lord rejoice. Hide your face from my sins, and blot out all my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew the right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence. And take not your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation. And I will give the will of the Spirit. Then I will teach transgressors your ways. And sinners will return to you. Deliver me from blood guiltiness, O God, O God of my salvation. And my tongue will sing the of your righteousness. O Lord, open my lips. For you will not delight in sacrifice, for I will give it. You will not be pleased with the very offering. The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart, O God, you will not despise. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Please be seated for the reading. Our text for meditation is the book of Titus, chapter 3, verses 1 to 8. So this comes up after Paul has uh, exhorted Tim, uh, Titus as the pastor on Crete to urge the various members of the congregation in their respective capacities to good works. Remind them to be submissive to rulers and authorities, to be obedient, to be ready for every good work, to speak evil of no one, to avoid quarreling, to be gentle, and to show perfect courtesy toward all people. For we ourselves were once foolish, disobedient, led astray, slaves to various passions and pleasures, passing our days in malice and envy, hated by others and hating one another. But when the goodness and loving kindness of God our Savior appeared, he saved us, not because of works done by us in righteousness, but according to his own mercy, by the washing of regeneration and renewal of the Holy Spirit, whom he poured out on us richly through Jesus Christ our Savior, so that being justified by his grace, we might become heirs according to the hope of eternal life. The saying is trustworthy. And I want you to insist on these things so that those who have believed in God may be careful to devote themselves to good works. These things are excellent and profitable for people. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us join together in the offertory on page 255 in the hymnal. Into your hands, O Lord, I commend my spirit. Into your hands I commend my spirit. You have redeemed me, O Lord, God of truth. Into your hands I commend my spirit. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Into your hands I commend my spirit. Grace, mercy, and peace be to you, name of God, our Father, and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Our reading for tonight began with a command. Remind those in Christ to be submissive to rulers and authorities, ready for every good work, speaking no evil of anyone, and remove yourself from quarrels. In a word, show perfect courtesy toward all people. Now, this can be difficult depending on the situations you find yourself in. For example, we might not want to submit to various authorities in power, given their policies and methods. 
And those of you who have heard me speak before on various political matters know how intense I can be when policies and politicians conflict with God's word. Regardless, we should show cur courtesy to those in authority. Pray to them, pray for them, pray for them, rebuke them by God's word, and submit to their authority. We do not comply with anything against God's will, though, that they may ascribe to us, try to make us do, but we should still show respect to the offices of authority, even when those who fill those offices might not live up to the standards of those office, offices. And if you hesitate about things like this, be mindful that this is what Paul is saying as one who lives with us in God's grace. Because if you think you have it bad in our day, we'll dwell on Paul's situation. The letter to Titus was likely written between two of St. Paul's imprisonments, among many. And both times that he was imprisoned around the writing of the epistle were for him holding to the gospel as a Christian. Now, the first time, he was arrested in Jerusalem by <coughs> Roman authorities at the direction of the Jews who were denying Christ. And after two years in prison and a delayed hearing, which eventually set him free, Paul was imprisoned again, later under Emperor Nero, who was himself known for his cruelty and perversion. Nero had Paul executed as a move to appease his constituents. Yet Paul is telling Titus and us to submit to the authorities who are over us. This is part of the perfect courtesy we are to show to all people. Even if we are shown evil and vile threats, even if we are slandered and persecuted, we are to show the love of God and the justice of the Almighty. We should give an answer to these people as to why we show love and not hatred by sharing the hope of Christ within us. And all the while, we can and should speak God's word of condemnation for sin, while not committing the same sins that are committed against us. So, in a word, we are to suffer by doing good. This is what we do. This is who we are. This is how we are like Christ. For he suffered for doing good and preaching God's will, only to be despised and rejected. Christ suffered for doing good. So we, now, who do good in faith, will also rise in the res resurrection like his. For Christ, when he suffered doing good, suffered unto the point of death on the cross, so that we may be saved. And right now, we live in new life. We are in a type of resurrection. One day we will be raised from our graves, bodily, but we have already been raised from death and sin to life in Christ. We are transformed, changed, or if you will, regenerated and renewed. We are not the people who are enticed by hatred and malice, slaves to our passions and pleasures, as Paul describes. That's who we were, but that is not who we are. Before we could not display God's love in the face of evils, small or great, because that is not a natural gift. That is a blessing of the Holy Spirit. It is through the Spirit's work in us that we might show the goodness and love of Christ even when under attack by sin. So, what has changed us? It is the Holy Spirit through the washing of regeneration and renewal. This is, of course, baptism. Baptism is what promises to give us the goodness and righteousness of Jesus Christ our Lord, for it promises to clothe us with Christ. But more than this, 
Baptism joins us directly to Christ's death to sin once for all and his resurrection from the dead. Therefore, God not only equips us with Christ, but the salvation and forgiveness that come from Christ through baptism. And it is in this gift of baptism where we are promised the Holy Spirit himself by the action of God the Father. This is why we are baptized in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Each person of the Trinity has a part to play in baptism. The Father saves us by washing us with the Holy Spirit, who then applies the grace of Jesus Christ, which is poured out richly upon us. This is the mark and seal of the Christian faith, as Paul describes in his letter to Titus. And it is the seal by which you have come into the faith, sealed in faith, where your God makes you part of his own household of faith, the church. Once you were separated apart from God, but now you are found with him as one of his own beloved children. And this is not some superficial mark, not just some piece of paper that says he has adopted you, like what you would find with adoption papers now, or like you might find in terms of washing, washing away dirt from the skin. No, through baptism we have a washing of regeneration and renewal. We are not born outwardly, but we are born from the inside out. We are remade in the image of Christ that we might become children of God. And we are now those who are godly in the world. Not by what we have done, or doing, or will do. All our works will definitely flow from the Holy Spirit making us new, make no mistake. But these things are not actually what make us Christian. Being a Christian is not just some outward term, it's not just a label that we have for ourselves. Being a Christian is actually being regenerated and renewed by the Holy Spirit. It is a remaking of ourselves by God himself. So if we're trying to make our mark, make our uh, worldly mark, make our superficial mark, well, Good works aren't going to cut it in terms of us just being Christian. Good works are the fruits of what has, what has been already planted. But first and foremost, God has remade us as Christians. And only then do we act as Christians. So there is a transformation that came about in you by the Spirit. Paul uses descriptions like disobedience, slaves to passions and pleasures, and hating one another. And think back to your life before Christ. Think back. Your life before Christ will be defined by those things. Being disobedient, being slaves, being those who hate one another. But when we try to think back about this, there's going to be well, it's probably going to be hard for quite a few of us because before, before we came to Christ, we were just infants. We were baptized as infants. And having grown up in the promises of Christ, well, you might not remember who you were before Christ. Not like people who came to faith later in life and received the seal and gift of baptism when they were able to remember an unbelieving lifestyle. But closer to the lifelong believers would be those who, after being baptized, have turned away from Christ into unbelief. And since faith is the means by which we receive the promises of God, even the promises of baptism, anyone living in unbelief lives as one without the Holy Spirit and his working of regeneration. For us who have grown up in the faith, we have not really been at that point but we can definitely imagine it. We can imagine the times when we were confronted with temptation and failed. We can remember times like when we have been confronted by authorities, be they politicians, police, or our parents, and then we became disobedient. We refused, we refused to do what is right, 
what is right being submitting to authority and not participating in any sins those authorities might be doing. And we can also imagine times when people irritated us. We can remember times when they got under our skin, said something that irked us, or boldly tried to outright offend or attack us. And we can remember that maybe in those moments that we responded with hate, because it is easier to respond with hate than to calm ourselves down, see the other person as God's creation, and act toward them in love. Hate is a more primal and, unfortunately, a more natural response to us who suffer from a sinful nature. But make no mistake, it is sin which makes us slaves to our passions, our emotions, instead of genuine Christian love, the genuine Christian love that we're supposed to have. Because everyone who sins is a slave to sin. But this is also why we have to remind ourselves, we're not slaves to sin. We're not. We have been freed by the Son of God. He's wiped the slate of your heart clean with the waters of baptism, so you are no longer an enslaved sinner, but a child of God. Slaves cannot remain in the household of God forever, but you, as a child of God, will dwell in the house of the Lord, not just the church here on earth, but the church everlasting. Whoever you were before you received faith, be it an unbaptized infant, unbaptized adult, or even someone who left the promises of baptism for a time. Well, whoever you were before baptism in God's grace, his love finds you now. You are his, and he is yours. You are not the same as you were. You are regenerated and renewed in Christ Jesus that you may live in perfect courtesy and in good works. And you might war against sinful thoughts and passions, but your sin does not define you. You know who you are now. You are a Christian living in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. You are defined by your relation to God, and it is not you who wars alone against sin, for warring alone is a losing battle for every human being who has ever lived and ever will live. Rather, you fight against sin within your flesh by the power of God himself, God the Father, who has given you the Holy Spirit to cleanse you by Jesus Christ who already won the war against sin for you. Christ stands victorious over sin when he rose from the dead, so the battle within your flesh is already a foregone conclusion. Joined to Christ through faith, sin cannot triumph and death cannot claim you. So do not live in this world as something you are not. Do not live as an unbaptized unbeliever. You have been cleansed from sin through your baptism. Do not live in sin any longer. You have received the Holy Spirit in your baptism. So be holy as he is holy. And you have been regenerated as a new creation, a Christian. So live as the Lord your God has intended you to live, by devoting yourself to faith and good works. You were not the same as you were before. Before, when you had people come against you, despise you, utter all kinds of evils and lies against you, even attack you, you might have responded in kind. But that's not who you are anymore. You are a child of God who loves your neighbor and loves your enemies. If you love those who only love you, what good is that? You're not loving as God loves, but merely living as unbelievers do. They love everyone who gives them anything they'd like. For us, for us, we are to live like Christ, who loves those who hate him. 
He did not return the hatred, nor did he share in the sin. He merely rebuked the people as he went to the cross to die for them, to die for us. Even if we feel at war with the sins of our flesh or the sins of the world, Christ has already won the victory at the cross for us. We are no longer defined by evil, sinfulness. We are no longer defined by the ways of the world. We are defined by what God has made us to be in baptism. We are defined as those who are regenerated, renewed in Christ our Lord, that we may live in him and like him. So we are also defined as those who can do good works in this world for the benefit of one another, even the enemies who are against us, that we might love them as Christ has loved us. Amen. May the peace which surpasses all understanding guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen.